Steve, it's more safe than Bloor. <laughs> Again, if we, if we allow this, 
<laughs> Folks, if it's not going to be orderly, I'll shut the meeting down, okay? Please. <laughs> Sure you, I've gone through the slides, I've vetted them. If you just give them a chance to give the context, I recognize that they're controversial, but they're the type of material that council reads through, and you've got to see the context. I, I promise you the slides become more and more specific as we go through them. So this is important. When I say bikeways and you see dotted lines on a map, they can be any of those things above. And that's an important piece of context. I, I obviously worry about some of them where they take lanes out, but there's others that are far less controversial, and they're actually a good news story. So that's part of the feedback tonight, is you may actually see things you like. So just, if I can just ask for your patience for a few minutes. I know people really want to talk about things like Water Street, there's time for that tonight. But if we, we, we carry on, we can't get to the timing of those, those questions. Thank you. So uh, we're going to use the term bikeway throughout this presentation, and as the councillor stated, it, it is a fairly general term. It's a broad, encompassing term that covers different types of infrastructure that all will facilitate um, cycling. So bikeways include things like multi-use trails that you can see there, which are shared by people who are cycling, walking, using mobility aids. They can be um, adjacent to roadways. They could also be through ravines, hydro corridors. Very flexible, most of them are paved. You'll see them usually with asphalt, which indicates that multiple different types of road users can use them. Um, another one you will see is the cycle track. They're bikeways that are separated from vehicle traffic, typically alongside the road, sometimes elevated, sometimes not. But there is a barrier between that cycle track as well as the, 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 through the travel uh, lanes for the vehicles. Um, sometimes they can be one way on one side of the street, uh, but where appropriate and safe, they can sometimes be provided with two-way bi-directional lanes on one side of the street as well. Bicycle lanes, which are shown there, um, typically a dedicated part of a roadway for people cycling. They don't have curbs or planters, but rather um, will use usually pavement marking to indicate uh, the area of the lane designated for um, cyclists. Um, Contraflow bike lanes, they will allow people to cycle in the opposite direction of a street that's one way, um, whereas uh, motor vehicles can only travel in one direction. Um, the people can cycle in the shared lane in the one direction, and then they have their own dedicated facility to travel in the opposite direction. And then something which is a bit of a more broad term, we call neighborhood greenways. They're basically streets where cycling are given priority, but um, they're usually in environments where there's already low motor vehicle traffic and volume and speed. So an example here is a traffic diverter. Um, barriers are installed diagonally across an intersection. So traffic is forced, the vehicle traffic, pardon me, is forced to travel in one direction, but cyclists and people on foot can go through. So can go next. Um, so the cycling network plan first approved in 2016 seeks to build on the existing network of cycling routes with the following goals. Connect gaps in the network, um, for people in places to, to travel by bicycle and get around. Uh, and the goal is also to go, grow the cycling network into new parts of the city, as well as to renew the existing cycle network routes where there are opportunities to improve quality. For, for example, when standards change or there's opportunities for improved cycling facilities. So this slide uh, touches on uh, what the councillor did present initially. Um, basically, how recommendations come to council and how decisions are made. So, for example, when staff bring forward a report that proposes um, a near-term cycling plan to council for um, projects for installation, there are three key components that inform that decision. So, public input, city policies and programs, as well as technical requirements. And you can say that the goal is to try to find that sweet spot in there where um, what's brought forward is then endorsed and approved by council, and then that then informs the ultimate delivery process. So if you go to the next slide, we'll touch a little bit about public input. So we just want to also be clear that there's basically two major components of public input as far as the cycling network plan goes. So where we are today, as far as talking um, about the invitation, was for really to talk about that high-level cycling network plan. Uh, as the councillor said, the current plan going forward is for 2025 to 2027. We're bringing candidate routes, we're going to bring those down to a few, and then those are going to come to council. 
So there's definitely more than one place in the process and that, where there's an opportunity for public input. So again, we've started doing public input for this current phase. Um, this is part of this conversation today. The Councillor will provide feedback, um, consolidated feedback from this meeting. The Councillor himself will bring that feedback to Council as well, or to committee when this comes forward. But after that is approved, then each individual project will also have its own public consultation depending on the complexity and the need. Um, that's where we get into the details of, for example, how that bike bay will fit and what it specifically will look like. And that will again go to Council with a staff, a staff report and recommendations. Um, so there are a few projects that we've been asked to discuss that were part of the 2022-2024 project. So, so Becky will be able to speak to those um, in some Identifying where there's a history of safety concerns, especially collisions, uh, collisions between people driving with those walking and cycling. An ever-growing focus of our work is equity. When we talk about transportation equity, we mean making transportation accessible to all by meeting the transportation needs of diverse communities. It's about prioritizing those most in need. Another factor is current cycling demand, looking at places where there's already a lot of people cycling. And on the flip side of that, looking at where there's good potential for cycling. One of the main data sources behind this potential demand analysis comes from the Transportation Tomorrow Survey, which shows where there are short trips being taken by bus or car, five kilometers or under, or long walking trips over a kilometer, which are good candidates for considering cycling if there was a comfortable network. Connectivity is also very important, closing gaps and extending from the current cycling network, and so is network coverage, which means starting a cycling network where there aren't any options yet. We factor in destinations such as schools, grocery stores, and community centers, and transit stations too, with the goal of supporting multimodal trips, like when the destination is too far to bike the whole way for the average person, but getting to a transit station by bike becomes a good option. The final priority analysis is about barriers in the built environment, so that's looking at routes that overcome a highway, train tracks, or a river. So all of those analyses are really valuable for pointing towards good candidate routes, but at some point we all apologize, we probably agree it's been under construction for quite some time. Um, and so that project, uh, from Jordan Thorpe all the way to Eglinton, has been approved by City Council and is moving forward to different parts. Right now, just north of Burnham Thorpe to Rathburn is under, under construction. Um, it is a bikeway project that is bundled with uh, necessary water work, and that is why the construction has been extended. Uh, we are still working on some parts of the southern extension, which is down through Wedgwood Park. Uh, that we hope to connect back with communities um, and the school adjacent to Wedgwood Park later this year, working with Council Holiday's office on some further engagement. Another project adopted was looking at connections to Centennial Park. Um, Centennial Park went through a large master planning process. In that process, a lot of the internal network of paths were discussed, but it was also discussed about the edge of the park, um, and routes that go to and from Mississauga. Um, we are actually about to go into public consultation for the So we're going to actually refocus back onto the next three years of projects. So I'm just going to hand it over to you. Uh, questions coming shortly. Uh, but next, I'm going to look to the future, and we'll go through the streets that are being considered for bikeways. Mm -hmm. Folks, I, I know we want to get into the questions. There's a couple more slides. You need to know what's coming. And if, if you don't pay attention to what's coming, there'll be another conversation like this in three years. So I just, I, I ask you to allow the staff to go through it. They've been, you got to remember, they've been directed by council to do this. They don't have a choice. So I, I appreciate all of the sentiments. I'm on your side with this, but we've got to get through the information so that I can take this back to council and let them know that we went through it 
and this was the feedback. So just a couple more minutes. I think what you're going to see is really important, and if you don't think it's important, I'm really concerned. Okay, I will try to do this part quickly. Uh, you go one slide farther. Um, so these are, as we mentioned, candidates. There's over 500 candidate, 500 kilometers of candidate routes. They are not all going to get selected for the next near-term program. We need to bring that list way down to a focused priority list uh, in terms of installation. And so a lot of the candidates were identified because of bundling opportunities with road work, requests and recommendations from the internal and external stakeholders. And I'll break them down for you so you can see the different categories of the candidates. Uh, so I mentioned one of the inputs to the long list is road work. These particular streets in Ward 2 were identified for that reason. Initially, we thought uh, that some of these might be in the 25 to 27 time frame. It's looking like all have shifted to be the earliest 2027, and many are now 2028, 2029, 2030. Um, so when there is road work to bundle with, there's a greater likelihood that vehicle lanes can be maintained by reconstructing the curb location and using the boulevard. The road work can be somewhat of a moving target though, as I mentioned, it's already been sliding in terms of timelines often due to major conflicts with other capital coordination, such as water main replacements. Um, so any work in the near term on these streets, if selected, would be focused on design and, con and consultation, and implementation would be coming later, subject to council approval. Okay. These streets do not have road work opportunities, but were identified for other reasons, including being in the original 10-year cycling network plan, as well as internal and external requests. If these streets get selected for design in the next near terms, in the case of the Dundas Street West Bus Rapid Transit Project, and the other by Hydro One, in the case of the Etobicoke Greenway Hydro Corridor Trail Project. So again, other than these last two projects being delivered by others, all of the streets at this stage are part of a long list of candidates, and it won't be possible for all of the streets to be selected for the next near term. Those that do will still go through a project-specific public engagement and council approval prior to installation. That concludes our presentation, and I will pass it back to Council Holiday. Thank you very much for your patience. I know there's a lot there, and I just, I really felt it was important you saw the part of the context. Now it's time for questions and comments. So I'm just, to do this in an orderly way, we've got a really busy room. I can't see really well up there, but I know there's a microphone, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say one, two, three, and we'll just keep rotating. It's okay if you want to line up a couple of people at each microphone. I know there's a rotating microphone, but I just can't see it because of the lights. So that's how we'll do it. One, two, three in a row. We've got, uh, well, we've got at least an hour, an hour and 20 to do this. And uh, between myself and the Toronto Public Service, we will do our best to answer the questions. And we will certainly be listening, not if you listen to the comments. If I can just ask John and the AV group to make sure the mics in front are live and set the levels up so that we can answer questions. Okay, uh, this is going to be second question. Okay, you can hear us here. Hey, go ahead, first question. Hi, Ron Sedgren, I live in the community. Uh, I am an avid cyclist. Um, my question is, a couple of recent results came out as far as these global uh, technology companies looking at congestion in cities. Inerts came out last year, basically ranking Toronto seventh in the world when being bad for congestion. In 2016, we were 36th. TomTom, Tom, another company, same area, a digital technology company, they came out recently two weeks ago. So what's the question? Uh, where they rank Canada, where they rank Toronto, one in North America, three in the world, four congestion. And now we have a disaster. I have to call a spade a spade, what we're seeing on the new extension on Lure. The question is, how can anybody in this room or community accept any decisions coming out of transportation services? If it was a business, I would fire the department. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
think Ron's question was actually largely political. Um, the audience should know, I don't expect you to watch the council debate or look at the minutes, council fully understood that a very small portion of people uh, currently use the Bloor Street area for biking. Exactly. And it was 0.3%. I, I made sure this was pointed out. They went into it eyes wide open, but, but remember, um, there's 26 members of council, they have varying degrees of philosophies and approaches to this. But they don't live here! And it's true that they don't live here, but they are the electing body. So there were votes for and there were votes against. But congestion clearly wasn't the top concern of theirs because it would have been easy to understand looking at other places on Bloor Street. I'll say one other thing because, again, I'm going to remind you it's a political meeting and I get to say things like this because I'm not staff. You know, we live in a city where people are concerned about the cost of housing. If you look at some of the economic reports, you will see that congestion is a contributing factor to the cost. It's very simple. People are forced to pay more money to live closer to where they live and work and play. So in a city, that, in a city government that claims to be concerned about the cost of living, uh, one should be paying attention to congestion, and I very much agree and understand about the negative impact that these lanes have had. John, can I just get the level up a bit on the main mic? So the last thing I would say is that I wish the council understood and appreciated more how important the Blue Street link is to this central community because Etobicoke is playing on north-south longitudinal streets that match up with cross streets. And what do we have? We have bottlenecks. We have very few crossings of the Humber River. Blue Street is one of them. And that is an essential connection to the ramp to the Gardner Express. Exactly. Without physically moving the land, this installation moved the downtown core of the city farther away from us. That's why I have political concerns on it, and that's why I worry about congestion. The key is, is to push this type of feedback harder at City Council so that they're alive to these issues. How do we do that? Yeah. Continue to come to meetings like this, continue to write to the mayor, continue to write to the councillors, and make sure that it is not missed. They don't answer. 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 Next question. My name is Michelle Dalton. I live in Upper Valley Village, specifically Chestnut Hills Parkway. My section of the street is now part of the proposed plan to link Rathburn to Dundas in the 2025-2027 plan. My concern is these streets, Bromley, Wimbledon, Chestnut Hills Parkway, section of Finchley, section of Hilldown Street, these are small village streets. Yeah. We do not have sidewalks. We have big ditches on either side in some cases. And we have flow through traffic, frankly, down to KCS, which makes our section quite busy at times. I'm concerned about the safety of the senior citizens that walk in our neighborhood, the dog walkers, my children who ride their own bikes on the street or walk, as well as the cars that are parked. There's, just, there's no lanes. So I'd like to understand better how that connection was chosen and why. And perhaps we could look at an alternative. Anglesey, for instance, is just a Slight, you know, turn up the other way, and that has a sidewalk for, for people. I'm going to ask the, uh, the the folks that are in charge of planning to take that question. Uh, please go ahead. Sure, uh, I can speak to this one. I mean, first, I would say it's a candidate route that hasn't been selected yet, and often with the neighborhood routes, there is opportunity to look at there are parallel options. So one particular route was identified that looked like the shortest distance path using the quiet neighborhood streets. And this is the kind of bikeway type that doesn't physically separate cyclists. It's not cycle tracks, it's not a trail. It's mostly about wayfinding. There will be a closer look into the vehicle volumes and speed and the traffic pattern. All the meetings and the dates are... We just heard from her what the data is. Right We've met we just heard it. We met with... Uh, uh, Blue West Village BIA. I mean, do you guys have to be on? Have you ever had on the floor? Have you guys ever had on the floor?
have driven, uh, driven from 3 to 6 p.m.? Have you done it yourself personally? Get in our shoes. Have you guys done it? Straight up. Have you guys done it? I I appreciate the bigger repercussions. I want to make sure we get a response on that. Um, I will volunteer. Yeah, I will endeavor to get that. If, if the questions can be asked. Where is that tower for? Why is she here? So I'm very, very familiar with the state of Bloor Street um, in that block between Prince Edward and Royal York. And so I see those bike lanes not several times a week. And what's most noteworthy about those bike lanes is an almost complete absence of bicycles. <laughs> So the, the, the other thing, and I don't know if anybody was aware of this or took this into account when making the decision to put a bike lane there, but there happens to be a train that runs underground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, perhaps that might be a consideration, availability of other transit, non-car transit, when you're deciding where to put bike lanes. So my question is, to whoever cares to answer it, how do we get rid of the damn thing? Yeah. First is council absolutely knew that there was a train going through there because the information was <laughs> Council knew it was 0.3 percent of the surface users of the cyclists. They knew that. They made the decision. So uh, let's 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 finish the second half. So in nine years as being a city councilor, I've seen bike lanes come out once. It was over in Scarborough. The local councillor led that initiative, council backed them up. The short answer on how to take the bike lanes out is that you have to collect 14 votes out of the 26 to agree to do it. And it's not easy to do. You've got one here. I'll start with that. But that's the So, uh, I'm going to be respectful to my colleague, but her vote is a public record, and she did. Yes, yes. What would you say to the family of the cyclist that was killed in Scarborough this week on that road? Yep. Um, Thank you. Next, next question up on the balcony is the balcony's coming. Hi there. My name is uh, Alex Cameron. I'm over on the other side. Over side, on this side. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, my name's Alex Cameron. I'm also a Ward 3 Superior Avenue uh, resident. Uh, and uh, uh, Councillor Holliday, I just want to really thank you for holding this meeting. We're finding it really difficult to get the city to listen to us. Um, as Andrew already told you, we've got 300 meters of street where they want to put in divided bicycle lanes where really all they need to do is uh, put, what they're trying to do is slow down traffic on the streets. So I said, hey, my goodness, why don't you lower the darn speed limit and then put in some speed traps? Uh, so can, can you tell me how to get a message to council and to the bicycle people to pay attention and solve the real problem? Thanks. Thank you. I, um, the best advice I can give you is to continue to engage with elected officials. You would start it with your local councillor. You would branch out to the public with your community council. You can spot who we are easily on the web and then the broader council on the mayor. If I may offer one piece of advice, that is be very deliberate in your communications to try to explain the problem that you wish to have solved. That's much easier than going straight to the solution. So I, I thank you for that. And it's a question I ask often at City Council. It's a question that I ask on Bloor Street is we need to be very deliberate about the things that we do to maintain public confidence. And the first question we need to do is define what the problem is that we're trying to solve. I don't think we do that well as a council, and the result of that is what we see here tonight. So I appreciate the comments. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. A meeting at, at community council uh, on this topic. We'll get everybody there from all of the adults yeah. and, and make sure that all we'll of the yeah. right uh, uh, There's a little bit of the mail on some of that, but Let's give see me see. a call and we can discuss what the rules are about the meetings. But thank you. Uh, I think the rotation is here. On this way. Hey, my name is Cody with uh, Balance on the Board is when we started the, uh, the initiative. Um, so far, I've, uh, I've talked with, you know, we have 25,000 residents of the Toto I have hundreds of submissions online and videos showing that there's a clear problem with fire respondents like, and police not being able to get by and ambulances not being able to get by. Everyone that I talk to that are local, Policemen, firemen, or ambulance drivers say that there's a significant problem here and that it's being ignored and not addressed. And yet, again, when we talk about it with the city, again, they say there's no problem here. So I just want to know how is that an acceptable answer when there's thousands of residents that are seeing this happening on a regular basis and it's just being completely ignored? And that my secondary question is I'm wondering if it's possible, I did email in. Uh, a couple of videos. I'm wondering if I could play those so people can see because there's numerous people in this audience that have sent me videos on these challenges and problems, and we are just being ignored and neglected entirely. So, so, sir, if if I may suggest, can we play one of them, and maybe somebody else can suggest yeah. another, okay. just so we're not here yeah. for several minutes. We play the 24-hour. Because for some reason the city won't actually do any data collection. And when we've asked for data numerous times, I was even told from people at the last meeting that that would have been available immediately. And I said, okay, great. What's your definition of immediately? They said, soon. And I said, okay, I'm still waiting for that. But we've been asking for data. Adam, you say that it's on the website. It's not there. You can say it all you want, but it's not there. We want to see the actual data. So we want to see the actual data. We have, we have now, and we are collecting data. So I would love to see what your data is and see what aligns and what matches. So can we articulate what's available on the actual data? Yes, the, da the data regarding monitoring of what has just recently been installed, you're right, is not on the website. We will be posting oh. some of oh. soon. Oh. What's, what's your definition of soon? Yeah. What is your definition of soon? Yeah. I've been told soon for months. What is your definition of soon? Yeah. 
Because now, again, it's now just Bloor and Lakeshore. Nothing north. There's nothing on Dundas, nothing on Eglinton, nothing on Shepherd. Shepherd doesn't even come into Etobicoke. Finch is about to get started. So I know people are saying that, hey, driving, we need to get east-west. But there all are multiple east-west corridors to get into downtown safely. You're in a car. Take the subway. I will take this, I will take the subway, but sometimes, like we know, sometimes, like, I have a friend who lives in an area where the buses don't, like, up on Jane, in that little community area, it's very hard because the bus is only half an hour, and I just go, I just go there. We could say more buses, but that's another cause. There's a one time some cost down to just to install the bike lanes. There will be maintenance with the roads. We have to pay so much money for the maintenance of the roads. If we run more buses, that's also a big cost. And the TTC has their own service plan for that. My and then my question is just: Is there? I see with the process. One thing, Bloor does not have a lot of connector routes. Is there plans in the future to get more easy connector routes onto the Bloor bike lanes? So that way, more people will come onto it. Because right now, it is also. Yeah, you can have a map. Mike. And just one last one. and allow him to say, I will ask the staff if they have a brief comment about additional routes that are planned that speak to your discussion. Sure, a quick response uh, is that connectivity is one of the factors in proposing new routes. So every time the network is extended, it raises the value of connecting routes onto the newly established bikeways. Thank you. I live in uh, Central. I live in Central, but we have a business in, in South Toby on the Queensway. Okay, I have never been able to get a message back or a call back from Amber Morley. Thank you for being here. Okay. I think she's useless, my opinion. But she's planning on putting bike lanes on the Queensway. Now, the bike lanes on the Queensway, all you're going to do is cause more and more problems. We have ambulances, fire departments, police department running up and down that Queensway six, seven times a day. Going to Park Lawn, going wherever they have to go, but they're running fast. Now, she's proposed to put bike lanes on there. All you're gonna do is affect the businesses. A lot of businesses are struggling now. You guys come up with all this garbage, okay, right after the pandemic. Right after the pandemic, when we were shut down by you guys. Okay, so you had enough time to do what? Sit down and say, how can we, you know, make some of these people go out of business? Because that's what you're doing. Sir, one, two, the safety. You shouldn't be good. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm elected official with everyone. All right, I'll show to you. Just to the Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll get you guys later. Now, all you're going to end up doing is having a lot more accidents. A lot more, because we talk about safety, you say safety. What do you mean by safety? You're leaving it up to the drivers to be safe. We are safe. Have you seen some of the bikers that are out on the roads today? They don't abide by the rules, they don't have water, nothing. On the Queensway, they do what they call, I like to say, the Tour de France. They take up a whole lane. That's legal. Personally, I'd like to run them over. Fuck you! Now you put these bike lanes in, it's going to take me at least another 20 minutes to get home and to work. Easy. I'm on the road, you said most people turn around and drive two days a week. I'm on the road six days a week. I'm in sales, I'm outside, I go see clients all over Toronto.
Concord, Hamilton, Burlington. You guys are like trying to make this, this city into one of the worst cities ever to live in. So if that's the case, then maybe you should just go to live in Cambodia. Because that's where all the bike lanes are. They don't even have bike lanes, they just have bikes. Okay, we're getting tired of paying all these taxes for stupid projects like this. To me, it's a stupid you raised your property taxes by 9.5%, and now you're putting this garbage on us? Yeah! What's going on with the city? I thought politicians had a couple of clients, but they don't. It's all about your agendas. Trust me, Amber Morley and her agenda. She just put two, what do you call them, electric charging stations in front of our business. That's another useless piece of garbage. No, it's great. Even, even, the term, even the guys installing it said it's a waste of money. Anyways, show the guys 15 second video. I will respond and thank you. Uh, politicians should be blasted. Yes. And uh, there is no excuse for some of the decisions that have come out there. I don't agree with them when they, they have come this way. Uh, I, would, I would say more people need to express these opinions as much as they can. Because the message, the message has to come back to the politicians. We're here, are we? You are. You are, and you're doing a great job. But we've got to convert those votes at council to see it this way. Bring them here. So many times, I feel like things change when you cross the Humber River and you come into a total cup. It just feels like the amalgamation never worked. Exactly. Yes. Please don't lose your identity in, in this mix of a mega city and keep up your voice. And thank you for that. Um, um, my name is Catherine Figuera. I work, I work, no, I don't work. <laughs> I live south of your, off Prince Edward. Uh, the first thing I want to say is Toronto is not Amsterdam. Toronto will never be Amsterdam. Boo! You can go as many bike lanes as you want. But this city is not, is not Amsterdam. I, as far as corresponding and getting replies back, I wrote to the mayor, I wrote to Amber, and I wrote to Barbara Gray at Transport, Transportation. Uh, I got nothing, of course, from the mayor. I got, I can't even, I'm not sure I got anything from Amber. I got